Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Abby with Fitness is Medicine. Today I'm going to show you an entire workout you can do lying on the floor. So you just need a couple sets of dumbbells, one a little heavier, one a little lighter, and a pillow or a soft um, playground ball of some sort. So um, since you're going to be on your back this entire workout, the entire thing is on the floor, Try to get a, get moving before you come and do this. So get your heart rate up, do five to 10 minutes. You could even maybe do a little bit longer since this workout is entirely on your back on the floor, but it makes it really easy to complete. You can get through these exercises pretty quickly, doing your core, doing some lower body, doing some upper body, and really have an effective workout in a small amount of space with a little amount of equipment. Okay, so get your warm up in, grab a couple of sets of dumbbells and come back ready to work. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna start on your back with your back flat to the floor. You can do this, you could do this on a bed um, if you have a hard time getting up and down off your floor. If you have a, maybe a little bit more firm mattress, we're gonna start with a chest press. So I'm gonna grab my heavier set of dumbbells that I've picked out. I'm just gonna leave my feet flat on the floor, back pressed into the bed or the floor and press my arms straight towards the ceiling. So this is a chest press. If you have any shoulder pain with this, right now I'm keeping my, um, keeping the weights parallel to each other, sort of like I'm holding a bar, like if I were to be doing, um, you know, like a chest press on a bench or something with a bar, but you can also bring it in here. You can bring it in closer to your chest, bringing your elbows closer in and that will protect your shoulders a little bit if you do have any shoulder pain with this. Stop when you get to the top here. I don't want you to press your shoulders forward. You just wanna come down, press all the way up, and try to go slowly both directions. Either way, with your arms, elbows out to the side, or step close into your rib cage. Okay. Next, we are going to do leg lifts. So staying on your back, I'm gonna scoot back just a little bit here. Press your back into the mat. So we're gonna keep those abs engaged to keep your back flat and we're going to do leg lifts. So this is a great way to engage your quad without any knee involvement. So if you do have any knee pain, this is a good way to engage your quad without um, stressing that knee joint Make sure you're breathing throughout this whole workout. Don't hold your breath. Really think about pressing your back into the floor. Now notice I'm not letting my leg touch the ground. So I wanna stop about there and then come up to it so that it's even with my other knee that is bent. So we're gonna keep that quad contraction throughout. So if I let it touch the ground, my quad gets to relax even just for a split second. So try to keep that quad contraction throughout. This is a hip flexor and quad um, kind of combination here. And if you do them long enough, you're really gonna feel it. Okay, so, oh, here comes Tubby. He's come to help me out. He got room the other day and he's in his Christmas bandana. Okay, so we're gonna do the other leg. I'm gonna lie down. Remember keeping your back flat. It's easy to kind of forget about that and let your back kind of Arch back up, um, but keep your back flat to the ground, engaging that core, protecting your back. He likes to come and check on you, and then he knows he can relax nice and slowly, both directions. We don't wanna go fast, no swinging, keeping everything tight and controlled all through your core. Okay, great. Next, we're going to do some knee squeezes. So grab that soft ball or a pillow works great as well. You can either use a throw pillow or, um, you know, a bedroom pillow or something. So lying on your back, <clears throat> just press that right in between your knees. And I want you to press and hold for about five seconds and then release. So this is a really great hip exercise. It's working your adductors, so your muscles that um, are on the insides of your thighs, but it also works lots of pelvic floor muscles and pelvic muscles 
This is a really good one that can be ignored and keeping those muscles strong is really good for a strong supportive pelvic structure. Remember to keep breathing through this and remember to keep your back flat to the ground throughout this whole one. This one can get pretty tiring because you're not used to using those muscles so much, but keeping all of those supportive muscles strong and engaged helps everything work properly. When you have weak muscles, like your glutes or your adductors, or you know, there's a lot of different muscles in your pelvic structure that are not firing or not working properly, it can make larger muscles um, kind of painful. And you can also end up with a little bit of joint pain. So we really want to work on that, that musculature. Remember flattening that back. Sometimes you have to remind yourself and keep breathing all throughout these. Okay, good. Next, we're going to grab one of those heavier weights that we just used for our chest press. And I'm staying on my back for this whole thing. So this is a good one to use if you've got something, you know, that it's hard for you to get around. If it's, you know, um, if you don't have a lot of space to move around, this is a really easy one to do. All right, not easy. There's some challenging exercises, but easy to perform, easy to get done. All right, so I'm gonna have this straight over my head. Make sure you have a really good grip on this weight. You're going to bend your elbows so that the weight comes towards your forehead and then go straight back up. So these are actually called skull crushers. We don't want that to happen to you though. So make sure you have a really good grip on your weight. The only joint moving here is your elbows. Your hands might move a little, but I don't want your shoulders moving. Your shoulders should be um, stabilized and your elbows are doing the work here. So we're working on your triceps, that muscle in the back of your arm that straightens your arm. If you are coming back here and going up, you're starting to work your lats a little more and we wanna really isolate those triceps in this motion, in this movement. And remember, you're keeping your back flat to the ground here, engaging those abs. So your core is engaging throughout this whole workout. All right, we're gonna do 10 of these. I probably have done a few more, but that's okay. If you start to have any elbow pain, stop. Use a little bit lighter weight. Um, and if you still have pain, then stop and message me and I can tell you an easier or a different way to do this exercise. Okay, next we're going to do bridges. So remember when we start to do bridges, we flatten our back to the floor engage our glutes and our hamstrings and press our hips towards the ceiling. However, the goal is not to raise your hips as high as you possibly can. The goal is to flatten that back, engage your core, protect your back, press up, and you're engaging your glutes. You want to think about squeezing through those glutes, not pressing up as high as you can. So you don't want to go into this really hyper arched position because then you put your back at risk. So flatten your back. And then at the top, we want to hold it for about five seconds. So I'm putting my weight through my heels here and then back down. Remember to breathe throughout this entire sequence. And if you're doing them properly, you should be feeling them in those glutes and those hamstrings. If you have any back pain with this, really concentrate on that flattening your back here before you go up and maybe don't press up as high as you think that you should. Press up just a little lower, just engaging those glutes and then come back down. Also, if you don't feel like holding it for five seconds is safe and healthy for your back, then don't hold it for quite that long. Keeping that back nice and flat, engaging those glutes and breathing. Pressing your weight through your heels and your feet. If you are doing this in your bed, 
Make sure you don't have any pillows under your head because then you're going to be crunching your neck and you want to have a nice flat surface for you to be resting your head on. I don't, sometimes I do have, I have little circle um, foam pads in my gym that will work nicely just to raise your head just a little to give it a little bit of support, but I don't want a big thick pillow under your head. All right, let's do two more. Breathing. And last one. All right, good. Okay, next we're gonna grab the lighter of the dumbbells that um, hopefully you grabbed. This one is gonna be a little bit harder, so we don't wanna do, um, the heavier weight. So we're gonna do chest flies on your back. So this one, you're gonna have your arms out to the side and pull up towards the middle. So these are chest flies. So you're flying your arms. Okay, remember you're flattening your back to the floor. If you have grabbed too heavy of a weight for this, you'll know right away. So go grab another weight, don't, don't force it. You could end up with a shoulder injury also, if you don't have any shorter weights or you feel like you're kind of on the verge, you want to try a little heavier, you can also keep your elbows bent. And that's going to take a little bit of torque off. It makes that lever shorter for these chest flies. If you can, though, let's do a full one. Um, by bringing them down like this, uh, you can also lessen your shoulder involvement. If this is just too much for your shoulder though, don't worry about doing this one. Instead, you can really focus on flattening your back and doing some pelvic, a little bit of a pelvic tilt, but doing that good TA squeeze, kind of what happens when we go into that flat back. Make sure when you get to this point, um, we're not arching our backs at all. So we want to keep that back flat to the floor. If this is the first time you've ever done chest flies, know that you might have a little bit of soreness right in here in your pecs, and that's okay. A little soreness is fine. We just don't want any joint shoulder pain. Okay, next for the last one, we're gonna come up and do a reverse plank. So it's going to look like a tabletop bridge. So sitting up from where we are, I'm gonna make sure my, so, to begin with, you can come up like this, and this is the beginning of a reverse plank. So I'm just gonna be on a tabletop, kind of a different type of a bridge. And your, your triceps that we worked earlier are gonna feel this a lot, and your hamstrings, when we get into the full reverse plank, are gonna feel it like from the bridges. So we're kind of incorporating the same muscles with a few different exercises here. So if you can, if you can do it here bent, that's okay. Try walking your feet out a little bit. And if you can, try a full reverse plank with a nice straight line from your ankles to your shoulders. Now, notice that you can turn your hands like this that are completely straight towards my feet, or you can turn them out a little bit. It might be a little easier on your wrists, but you do want your shoulders over your wrists so that you're not way out here because that's really hard on your shoulders. So right in here, breathing, really contracting those hamstrings, holding you in place. Your hamstrings and your triceps are probably what are feeling this the most. So the goal is to hold it for about 30 seconds. If it's feeling like too much, you can bring those feet in, hold it here. And if that's feeling like too much, just come back down. You don't have to hold it the entire time. So this is something we can work on. The other thing that is a good option is using a bench, kind of like when we've done the plank with your, with your hands up on the bench. You can do the same thing in a reverse plank like this. So it takes a lot of the lever off. It makes your lever shorter. It takes a lot of the pressure off your shoulders and your hands. So, 
Try it, go all the way through those a couple times. And remember, if you want to make this more of a workout, then get up off the floor in between sets, go do some cardio, even walk up and down your stairs for five minutes. That's a really good cardio workout. Um, and then come back and do another set. But if you're feeling like you just need something that you can do quickly, grab a couple weights, do this workout, do it all lying on the floor or on a firm mattress. All right. Thanks everybody. I hope you're enjoying your week. Remember to stretch when you're finished and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much.